Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 9 of our custom character controller series in Unity. So I apologize, there's been a bit of a longer gap than usual between the last video and this one, but as I was working on this um, system, I realized that, you know, we're dealing with buttons here now, and that's really going to affect more than just jumping, it's going to affect actually our other controllers as well, so I really wanted to make sure I had it buttoned down and got it right before moving forward with this project. So anyway, now that I've got all that figured out, let's get our character jumping. First thing we're going to do, we're going to look at our walking controller script in mono develop. You can actually close out of the rest of these for right now. We're not going to need them for this video. And right now we've got our read input um, taking in our axis information and then converting it into some movement for our rigid body. We're going to do kind of a similar idea for our uh, buttons though. And they're going to kind of set a um, vertical velocity for our character so that they can jump up. In order to do that, we're going to need to add a couple of variables up here. I'm going to break these up, actually, because these are kind of the information, uh, I'll say controller inf or movement information. And then down here, these are our settings. And the only reason these are public is so that we can adjust them in the inspector right now. We're going to add a new public setting. This is going to be a public float called jump velocity. I'm going to set this, actually I'll call it jump speed so that we're keeping it similar and we know there's a difference between it and what the actual rigid body velocity are. So jump speed, I'm going to set it to about 6. You can certainly change. Um, Change that if you want it, we'll be able to change that in the inspector, but I find that 6 has a pretty good feel to it. Up in our movement information, we're going to add a float as well, and this is going to be called the adjusted, I'm just going to ADJ for adjusted vertical velocity, which is kind of a mouthful, but what this is basically going to be doing is we're going to be adding it to our existing uh, rigid body's vertical velocity so that... Um, we're taking into account gravity still, but are able to change that velocity. So with all that there, now we can go into our read input script. And basically what we want to do is we want to say, if the jump button is pressed, we want to add our jump velocity, our jump speed, to our character so they jump up. So it seems pretty simple. We could pretty much say here, you know, set vertical jump, and we'll say if data dot buttons at zero is true, meaning it is being pressed, then our adjusted vertical velocity is going to equal our jump velocity or jump speed. And then all we should have to do in theory down here, um, we do want to reset. We'll be smart about this and we're going to say, you know what, we're going to reset our jump velocity if there's no nothing being input because we don't want to just continue floating up into the air when there's um, no button being pressed. So we'll add that in here. I'm going to quickly say adjusted vertical velocity equals 0f. So that'll just reset that if there's no buttons being pressed. But then if there are buttons being pressed we're going to want to add this um, jump speed now our adjusted vertical velocity. So we can say add adjusted vertical velocity to our existing rigid body's velocity. So like I say again, we're continuing to take into account if there's any gravity going on, but we're going to add that on. So that seems like it should work. We're, you know, adding the upward velocity we want. Let's jump back over to Unity and see how it works. Hit play, hit space, and that's a huge jump. I'm going to actually not maximize this on play. I'm going to zoom out our scene view here. And let's see let's see what's happening here again. Hit play. Hit space. We're going very very high for what was a very quick tap of the um, tap of the space bar. Let me jump back over here in fact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in here where we're um, where we're actually pressing the button. I'm going to quickly do a debug log. I'm just going to say jumping. And that's going to let us know how many frames we're actually pressing that for. Hit play. Go to the console. I'm going to do a really quick jump. 
and that was three frames worth of actually pressing the button and we're going very very high there why is that well there's a couple of reasons for it the first is that we're not actually checking we're checking every single frame that we're hitting the jump button we're adding velocity to our um to our character the other problem is that we're not while we're resetting the jump velocity when it's um or the vertical velocity when there's no buttons being pressed we're not doing that for those three frames so we're just kind of compounding we're adding more and more velocity to our jump to our adjusted velocity so that by the end of those three frames we're adding six and then 12 and then 18 so we're you know uh, quick math in my head there like 42 or 36 yeah 36 velocity we're adding actually to our character and not just the six that we want so obviously that's not the way we want this to be working so let's jump back here and do a little bit of a sanity check first thing probably the safest thing that we can or most obvious thing we can do here is we want to make sure that we're not adding you know not compounding that um, adjusted velocity with jump speed on top of jump speed on top of jump speed so in addition to resetting our velocity here we can reset it up here as well whenever we're reading input we're going to say we're going to start at zero again much like we're doing with the movement so we're going to say adjusted vertical velocity equals zero f and at this point we can kind of see here that this and this are the same thing it seems like it'd be a good spot for a um, for a new function because we're doing the same thing multiple lines multiple times and it seems like it's actually kind of a useful idea to just kind of reset all of our movement information back to zero so I'm gonna create a quick function here called void reset movement way down at the bottom of my screen there so void reset movement and all this is gonna do I'm just gonna cut these two from here paste them in here and so that just resets the movement in fact I'm gonna rename this reset movement to zero so we know exactly what we're doing there and I'm gonna put that in where I deleted the actual lines of hard coding there and likewise up here instead of those we can just say reset movement to zero so now this should be a little bit better now now if we hit play we don't go quite as crazy but we're still jumping pretty high there and that's because we're still adding every single frame that we're pressing jumping we're adding six and then six again and six again so it's not it's still you know giving it a lot of push not exponentially so now but still adding one on top of another what we want to do is really we want to say only on that first frame that we're hitting the button should we be adding that um, that jump velocity now in the traditional way that you would kind of be tracking your keyboard inputs in that there is things like get button down which says only on the frame that the button goes down do we do something and we're going to do something kind of like that here but we're going to add a little bit of extra um, goodness to this so that we're going to get a little bit more information which is going to be really useful in future actions that we do which is that i want to create another um, bit of information up here which i'm going to call float jump press time and what this is going to track is how long have we been pressing the jump button and what that's going to do for us is it's going to tell us a have we just started pressing the button and b if we are, if we are holding it how long have we been holding it for as well which can be really useful for things like charging up certain powers or even charging up a jump if there's a certain way you want to do that so what we're going to do here is we're now we're going to add a little bit more customization to our data buttons here we're going to get rid of the debug log because that's not going to be important anymore delete that altogether, and we're going to say instead of just going right to oh if the buttons hit start jumping we're going to want to check if jump press time equals zero meaning if it hadn't been previously being pressed and so this is the first time we're pressing it then cut this paste it into here then we're going to add that jump speed and right after that we're then going to say jump press time plus equals time dot delta time so we're going to add that time in between the previous frames 
so that when the next frame comes around, now jump press time is no longer equal to zero, it's equal to the amount of time we've been holding the button, so it knows, oh, we're, we're holding the button now. So we don't need to make this jump again. Lastly to this, I do want to add one more thing in here, which is going to be an else statement. And the reason for this is that we want to also make sure that we're resetting our jump press time, because if we don't reset it, then it's just going to um, think it's being held perpetually, and it's never going to, we're going to jump once, and we're never going to be able to jump again. So what we're saying here is, we know the button's being pressed, so otherwise the button must not be being pressed. And we can simply reset jump press time equal to zero because we've kind of reset that state, we're no longer being pressed, there is no hold time in existence that we care about. Likewise, down here in our late update, we can say if there's no new input, we also know that there's no button being pressed. So we can also quickly just say here, jump press time equals zero F as well. And that should be all we need now. Now if we jump back over to Unity, we'll see that we're only going to be jumping when we press that button initially, and it's going to be just the initial um, six worth of velocity, and we're not going to be jumping way up into the sky. So we'll hit play again here, and there we go, a much more reasonable jump. We can, move, we can also move and jump, move forward and backward and jump, even diagonally. We actually also are kind of able to kick around in midair, which may be what you want for your game, may not be. Um, I might look at that in a future video in terms of making sure that we're only moving when we're grounded, things like that. But now we've got our jumping working and we've got this system in place that we can say, am I starting to press this button? Am I holding this button? And if so, how long? Which is going to give us a lot more robust information for future actions that we're going to take with this controller. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.